what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here happy halloween to all my subscribers and everyone who plans to plans to subscribe in the future possibly after watching this video this is going to be my halloween 4 the return of michael myers review halloween 4 the return of michael myers was released back in 1988 and it was directed by dwight little it stars donald pleasance ellie cornell and daniel harris those are the three i'm going to mention and george p wilbur he plays michael myers in this film the movie is set 10 years after the first two films because if you recall they wanted to go an anthology route with the rest of the films but that didn't work out with halloween 3 and fans wanted michael myers back so that's what led to all of the sequels being about michael myers um donald pleasance has seemingly killed the shape at the end of halloween 2 but fans were not pleased with the events that occurred in halloween 3 and they did not like this idea so that's when it became apparent that they wanted to make the entire series about michael myers this film is set 10 years after the original film, the first two films. Uh, we follow now Jamie, Jamie Lee Curtis's character, Laurie Strode, is no longer present. She's dead in this in this new film. She died somewhere in between these ten, this 10 year gap. Uh, she left behind a child named Jamie Lloyd. That's who Danielle Harris portrays. Danielle Harris does an amazing job for such at such a young age for a child actress in this film. Uh, her, she gives a very believable performance. Her mannerisms are also very well done just everything she perfectly embodies uh, a, a nine-year-old girl or i think she's eight year old eight years old in this film her character is anyway but yes daniel harris she really did an amazing job carrying this film and so did ellie cornell who played rachel who i would like to say is everyone else's favorite final girl outside of jamie and Lori. Uh, Donald Pleasance again back is dr loomis he survived the fire as well from halloween 2 with michael myers uh, he looks a bit older, of course, because this is 10 years later in real time as well. Or almost close to 10 years later in real time, as far as like the real the real life time period that's passed away since the second film. Uh, he gives another amazing performance. He's a little bit more, his dialogue in this is a little bit more intense. And I like how, I like how they try to recreate that, that, that uh, chemistry he had with Sheriff Brackett from the original film. They try to recreate that with Sheriff Meeker, the new sheriff in town in this film. I like that aspect of the movie. I think that George P. Wilbur, while I did not like the Michael Myers design of the mask, I did not like the mask. I don't know why it is so hard to keep a consistent mask. Uh, like just pattern it after the original. I don't know why that's so hard. It seems like that's a challenge for so many because the mask changes so much as the sequels go on. I don't know what is so hard about keeping a consistent look-alike mask ready to go in case you decide to do another film. And it's not even the fact that the masks are all bad. It's just the fact that they, they look they look nothing like what we got in the original movie. And it's just, why can't we have a consistent mask? That's just something that always bothered me. Uh, the director of the movie, like I said, was Dwight H. Little. I think he did a fine job. The cinematography in the movie is, is fine. The score, like the re the revamp of John Carpenter's classic theme, I think that was okay. I don't think it I don't think it com it's even coming close to the original. But like the revamps that we get in the future sequels involving the theme song, I think they're amazing. Not amazing, but they're solid and they they do it. They don't do it justice, but they're acceptable as far as what you would expect as close you could get to John Carpenter's original classic theme. Uh, Anyway, Michael Myers awakens and he's trying to kill his niece, Jamie Lloyd. He has been in a coma for 10 years and for some unexplained reason. This is the movie that also clearly indicates that there's something supernatural going on here because he just awakens after hearing that one of his relatives is alive or that he has a relative nearby that's living in Hatterfield. He just awakens from his coma. So that raises a question to me as an audience member. Well, if someone had been in the room mentioning this before, would he have, aw would he have awakened then? why has he been i just it's just just little things like that like little things like that bother me because it's just showing like a like carelessness to certain details that filmmakers take when they approach films uh i think that everyone did an amazing job as far as the acting is concerned like i said before i did not like michael myers mask in the movie but everything else as far as the cinematography and the soundtrack and the acting i think everyone did so a solid job what I will say is that the kills in this movie, I think are some of the best Michael Myers kills in the entire franchise. Uh, they're not very gory, but they are gruesome in ways. 
like just very unique kills that's my opinion i thought that some of these kills were very unique and original never seen certain things like this before although some of them are a bit unrealistic it was still cool to see on screen so that's something i appreciate um the dynamic as far as like michael myers hunting hunting down and killing his niece i think that could have been done a bit better because i always found it odd how jamie exactly knew what michael myers looked like like how did i don't understand how i mean as far as like i don't think her her mother would have been going around telling her about what her uncle did i don't think that's something she would have been knowledgeable of i, I would have expected that jamie lee curtis's character laurie stroll would have possibly hidden that from uh her daughter so i'm always curious as to how jamie lloyd became so well versed in the nature of her uncle besides of course living in haddonfield and hearing it from neighbors and people in town of course that's all i can think of the film itself as far as like what i would give it on a scale of one to ten i give halloween four a solid six and a half because the ending of this film is another thing that bothers me at the very end of the film that's where we get like a solid con concrete confirmation that something supernatural is going on here because we see michael myers not because if you recall in the original film he takes six shots in this movie he's taking more than six shots from numerous different people at different angles and he not only he not only takes them all in but he he survives and and you know what happens at the beginning of halloween 5 i just thought that was a bit ridiculous and then on top of that the ending where in the end of the film jamie lloyd she touches his hand and then for some strange reason this leads to an unexplained psychic link between them that gets further explored in halloween 5 that's something i will get into in my halloween 5 review um i just feel like halloween 4 although it was a decent sequel it had a lot of problems as far as continuity goals and staying true to the original and it's just it's just like little things like this like taking small premises that john carpenter gave us and then so many different people start to get involved and they start wanting to do their own thing and they just want to give their own spin on it and then they start making ridiculous ridiculous plot devices that don't end up being fully fleshed out they don't make a lot of sense in the end and you'll see what i'm talking about as i progress with my reviews when i get into halloween 5 and halloween 6. let me know what you guys thought about halloween 4 the return of michael myers down in the comment section below oh also and another thing i want to mention the girl uh the girl in the film the when they get ready to show almost like they the little tease they give you i appreciate the fact that they they tease the audience the right way and there's no real need to actually block anything out because they don't really show anything but it was a nice little tease that they gave the audience that's just my opinion uh but let me know what you guys thought about halloween 4 down in the comment section below if you enjoyed the review give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video in the description i'll have links to all my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there message me there to let me know what movies you'd like me to review in the future with all that in mind guys i'll see you in the next video